Sky Climbers Alpha goes live today, but what is Sky Climbers? I've done a bunch of videos talking about it so far. It is a RPG survival light open world game with a big emphasis on collecting creatures like Pokemon using different elemental attacks where they can evolutionize and go up into different forms as well as project management. You will have the ability to control big towns and cities. You can even go ahead and free build and you can dictate what you want in your town in terms of traders. So it's got a lot of city management as well. Had a huge successful Kickstarter campaign and this is the first alpha that's gonna be taking part and people are allowed to stream it and I'll be streaming it later on today. But what can you expect? Well, they've got a whole bunch of content that I've listed in a FAQs. Let's go through exactly what you'll be doing in today's alpha and what you'll be seeing hopefully from a bunch of creators. We're getting a chance to show this off. There's no actual NDA. We can actually stream and show this off as much as we want. Now the game is on Steam, but you do, I think, need to access the game via Humble Bundle. That's normally the case with these kinds of things. And the Alpha will be going live at 10 a.m. EST time. So that's gonna be around 2 p.m. in the UK because of daylight savings time and stuff. If you've got any issues in activating your key, you probably do need to send a little DM via the email that you found on the Kickstarter program. They have been doing a bunch of giveaways, Paratrope, the developers, so you might get a chance if you follow them on social media as well, or other content creators. So the alpha kicks off with the Draconian continent. It's home to four or five biomes, the four biomes that are gonna be playable in this alpha. The fifth one is the ocean biome, but it's still in development. We're all gonna be starting off in exactly the same seed, so it's procedure generated, but you can basically have the same worlds if you know the seed number, just like it is in Minecraft and other games. And we're all gonna be starting off in the deep forest on the second outer ring. Each biome pretty much starts from the center and then you have rings that will encompass it. So in the middle, we're gonna have a magma volcano style biome. I'm guessing this is where we're gonna get one of the nine elements that are a key part of the game. And obviously that element is magma. After that, we're gonna have the geyser plains biome. Then the third biome ring is going to be the deep forest. And then the fourth is the coastal meadow. So apparently when we get to this stage, don't keep going further as you'll just keep going infinitely. It's pretty unique the way that you play this game. Remember, a lot of the focus is on actually city building. So they've got different input modes that you'll press tab to activate. Clearly defined, the city building will pop up. This is how you can control your settlement, maybe dictate roles, and effectively how you start your settlement by putting a town hall down. Each village role is gonna be distinct, requires specialty buildings to be set down. And once villagers are assigned to a job by clicking on the villager, then a location they will execute it over a time limit. For example, the merchant, when constructed, offers items for the players to purchase. And I really like this. This is something I've not seen a lot of in other survival games. Sure, you can make NPCs come and live with you, or there's a special trading outpost that you'll find. But not many have it that you can actually build your own town, your own city, and then have them actually available like this in a big scale. Then I've got tools and weapons. Your tools won't run out. You've got like an everlasting pickaxe. In fact, it's a multi-tool. You'll be using the same tool to chop down your wood and your stone. And then a typical weapon attacks using the left mouse button with one and two with special attacks. Apparently you're gonna be able to get rust weapons that will spawn in the environment. And we have to get more tools and weapons from the shops that spawn or constructed by players. Then I've got the third tab, which is the base building. It's completely free placement. Obviously you're gonna need resources first and you will be able to place campfires down which will allow you to rest. And then fourth, probably the one that a lot of people are excited about, monster taming. In Sky Climbers, you will pretty much whittle an enemy down or creature with its health and then you can go ahead and stun it and tame it. Depending on what class you've chosen, you get a starter creature along with a Maga Gallop for mounting and traveling around Draconia. The starter creature will help you in combat and basically give you a short stat boost for you as well. Now, if you want to find a wild Sentius, that's what they're called, you have to weaken its health, as I said, before shooting a projectile from the gauntlet, which will stun the Sentius. Using the energy beam will allow the player to tame Sentius, and for now they are sent to a non-accessible inventory to be added in one of the earliest patches. The Sentius will all have different skins, the Sentius will have different regional skins, making exploration more different. So we're all getting one of these horses, basically. It's a magma passive type creature. We'll find it in each of the biomes, geyser, coastal, and magma. It's got a weakness, I'm guessing, to water. Then we've got the dire pyre, which is obviously some sort of flaming wolf. Got to say, the website is really good. 
It's got like a proper pedia of all of these creatures. So you go check out more details. It also shows the evolution. A big part of Sky Climbers is making sure your creatures go up levels to their final forms, just a bit like Pokemon, I guess. Then we've got the Magmaton, which pretty much looks like some sort of ball. It does look pretty badass, I've got to say. Then we've got the Okamito, which I'm guessing is like a wolf. Only two stages for this one, small and then chunky. Anyone for a Yak mount? Or maybe like a Koala bear one? I reckon this one might be a lot of people's favorites, the Raptra. Again, looking pretty badass in its final form. So that is a lot of stuff going on there with the creatures. Remember, it is only an alpha, so I'm guessing they just want lots of feedback about the game, how stable it is, any bugs or issues. As the alpha goes on though, they are going to add even more of these Sentius. Now, what are you actually gonna be fighting in the game? These Yagi camps are basically the main enemy. You'll be able to get lots of loot from them if you defeat them, and maybe some Voidlings. This is what is gonna appear more at night time, but you can rest through the night to hopefully avoid them. So I don't think the online part of it is gonna be working today, judging by the fact that if you rest through the night, you can avoid them. That can't be working if it's on actual proper servers with other players. In terms of what the city generation is gonna be like, there will be kingdoms scattered around where you'll find villagers walking around. You'll be able to trade, go and shop stuff with the merchants, and it is all procedurally generated. Not only will you be able to use your mounts to run around, but you can climb almost anything but they do have procedurally generated roads that connect up between points of interest that are lit up by these lamps. Then we've got something called pyramids. These are gonna spawn rarely, but they'll like to save points as long as you climb to the top of the platform. Same thing goes for temples. You'll be able to save your progress, I guess. Then we've got a bunch of stuff that's not necessarily gonna be working correctly just yet, like fragments, although there will be void altars that are locations reserved to void lords, which are high level enemies. Now, I must have missed when the alpha is actually going to run out because it seems like it's going to be doing it a long time since they're going to be doing weekly patches on it. All in all, it's looking good. Sky Climbers is something that I think would appeal to a lot of survival fans that love the taming aspects of games like Ark or even Conan Exiles, but also the builders out there. People that want something a bit different and actually have their villages and towns they build populated by creatures. You can only hope that the combat evolves over time and that the enemies that will encounter will be challenging but the biomes look gorgeous enough. The art style is amazing. So yeah, I'm expecting big things from this game. I will be streaming this later on. I've been given some access to it. So check out the stream and look out for lots of videos this week from me covering it. It's a pretty cool sounding mix of stuff. Monster taming, city building, city management, as well as obviously combat and being able to explore a huge PC generated world. Not many games are really achieving that kind of level of fidelity and different activities. And if they can pull it off and make it interesting and it's not just too boring going from one place to another, or you can do a lot of creative stuff with it, then I think this game could be absolutely huge. Judging by its Kickstarter, of course, it's still already got a big backing and I think hopefully Hopefully that will translate. The release date for the game isn't until November time. I do believe around the 22nd of November if things stand as they are. And they are going to be running more alphas and betas all throughout the year. So yeah, I'm going to be covering this hopefully in a big way for the rest of this year. Make sure you check me out later on and I'll see you at back for more Sky Climbers news in the future.